Well, <laughs> welcome to Chris Fox. Nice to have you with us, Chris. Um, how long have you been playing in folk clubs? I think it's about four and a half years. Uh, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure because there's a. It's kind of like an interesting transition from uh, open mics, and then I found Cambridge Folk Club. I think about four and a half, maybe five years ago. Um, I went there and did the open stage and kind of uh, just sort of fell in love with it instantly and thought that this is where I need to be. Um, but I'd spent a couple of years before that kind of playing in bars and busking and doing lots of different stuff, trying to find the sort of more receptive audience. But that was the first one that I came across where people were kind of willing to listen to the stories behind the songs. Yeah, but OK, Chris, you've finished the story now. That's not the only thing you found at the folk club at Cambridge, because when you walked out... What happened? What were people saying? Oh yeah, I, <laughs> I remember. I remember the first one I went to. So it was, um, it was an open, it was an open stage, and uh, you had all these different types of music. I had like uh, Cajun music, blues music. Um, someone got up and played a saxophone. Two girls got up and sung a, a Russian aria. Uh, you know, you, you know, you know, like an opera piece of music. Um, Someone sung some traditional English folk, a traditional Irish folk. A guy got up and did a boring solo. And uh, as everybody was leaving, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a running joke now, but as everybody was leaving, and I found, I found this of loads of folk clubs, people were all kind of bitching about how everybody else didn't belong there, like, every, like all, of the, all of the styles were wrong. <laughs> and I thought I just walked into paradise. I thought, this is great because I love all this type of stuff. And it's just um, it's a perfect fit for me, you know, because I don't really sort of play in one particular style. And it was like... It was like heaven. I, th I thought it was. I thought it was wonderful. But everybody was kind of really cross. They're like, "Oh, these guys aren't folk, and that's not folk, and they need to stay at home, and all of these different types of things." So it was a, it was a very, it was a very eye-opening experience. Can I bring up the point I was talking to Chris about just before we started recording this, which is that it's not just bitching about what is folk and what is not folk. It can actually have an effect on the artist concerned. Now, in your case, Chris you've got a number of genres which you which you mix into what I would call Chris Fox sound. Mm. What, just before you start to think about doing a song, does it flash in the back of your mind, ah, but is this going to be acceptable? It, it doesn't anymore. I have to admit, it did when I first went to the folk clubs and first started kind of sort of researching and trying to learn about the genre. I was, I was very aware that there was a lot of politics and I kind of thought, oh, how do I fit into all of this? And I, I tried for a long time to kind of write in one particular style. But then I found a lot of the ideas that I was really happy with and sort of most pleased with, I was having to kind of let go. And I thought, this is silly. I'm not really staying true to myself. I'm trying to fit in. And when I let go of that and just played my own stuff, that was when I started to get kind of more... Um, well, just kind of better gigs. Really. I started to get support slots and, you know, got asked to come back and sort of play showcases and stuff like that. Yeah, so it was, it was, quite, it was quite an important thing for me to recognise and then ultimately just ignore. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I wish. What, mm. what was the motivation for writing that? So I got it from... Uh, it's, it, I, I, got, I, I first heard it in the soundtrack for the film Cold Mountain. I don't know if you guys have come across that. In your travels that's got a lot of very kind of old old time americana music in it um and i love the version from the film but it was very very american sort of like the accents and the singing and stuff and then i found in the in the in the penguin book of folk songs the english book of folk songs and um, published by penguin um they've got the original english lyrics so i wanted to do uh, a version of it on the American of, of the uh, on the American lap dulcimer, the Appalachian mountain dulcimer, but then sing it with the original English words, and then talk about that on on stage. Um, yeah, and kind of use that as a. But yeah, that's that's where I first heard it in the film. I wish I wish, but it's all in vain. I wish I would have made. Made again, and never shall be till the apples grow on the orange tree. I wish I wish that my baby was born and smiling on its father's knee, and 
and I to be in the old churchyard with the long green grass growing over me with my apron strings they hung down low he followed me through the frost and snow and now my apron's up to my chin he passes by and he says nothing Grief or grief, I'll tell you why The girl has more, more gold than I More gold than I, and beauty and fame She will come, like me again I wish I wish but it's all in vain I wish I were I made again But I made again I never shall be Till the apples grow On the orange tree Till the apples grow On the orange on the orange tree tell us about your uh, your uh, your experiences with looping do you like it i love it yeah i mean i mean for me it started out as a, as a tool to kind of well, it started out as something i used to take busking with me and i, I used to find it, it, I, I go and stand there and play in the freezing cold for a couple of hours just singing and playing and people were not that bothered. But then when I got the loop station, I could start kind of um, making like, percussive sounds and drumming sounds and being able to kind of free up my hands for soloing and, and singing vocal harmonies. It, it really helped just engage people a lot more. So then I started putting it into my songwriting. And it's just, I, I think it's, um, I think if you're sort of a singer songwriter and all you do is kind of play and sing guitar, that's great. But after a while, I think people are kind of craving for something a little bit different. And that I think that really helps mix my sets up a little bit, just makes it a bit more, uh, a, a bit more interesting, really. I think, I, I think, I think it's helpful. And you can, and you can like, put the guitar down and do completely a cappella numbers with, you know, beatboxing and, and, you know, vocal harmonies, which I think is a really, um, well, for me, it's a really interesting take on the kind of uh, sort of singer songwriter. Come smugglers, come thieves, come men at large. I offer you great sanctuary with a life led by the stars. Come villains and come fiends, and come those in toil and better life awaits you. And with me you share the spoils Now we sing hooch Gray and up she rises Let out the sail Come draw the anchor from the ocean Let good times prevail It's hooray and up she rises Boys come to see you share the bounty and the riches If you join with me We sing hooch Hooray Life of leisure awaits you Sign up, you'll see Come sail the compass points, my lad And you'll have more than you need Well, there's those who live life honestly But you think you want more Come see the proof of piracy 
Bala bolin em astu We sing hoo Rain up she rises Let out the sail Come draw the anchor from the ocean Do times prevail Is a hoo Rain up she rises Boys come to see You share a bounty and the riches If you join with me We sing hoo I do, um, I do, I do all real-time looping. I like it. It's much more dangerous and much more exciting. Yes, um, well, in Sean's words, it all goes to crap very quickly. <laughs> you, you yeah. I find the um, I find if you pre-record them because because the rooms that you're playing in are always different. I would I would build a I would build a loop at home and say pre-record it, and it would sound great in my bedroom in here. But if you take that and play it in a church, it doesn't. It doesn't work the same. So when I'm on stage, I always play the first two or three numbers acoustically so I can hear what the room sounds like. And then I know how loud to play the different parts of the loop. If you, if you kind of, if you try and standardize it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really work because no, because no two spaces sound the same. So you have to be quite aware. Um, that's probably a little bit, a little bit overly technical from one. It's something we've never done or, or really experienced. So it's interesting. If you had a perfect world, would you prefer looping or a band? Um, <laughs> They're in the company, is it? It's, at the very, moment. Yeah. it's a bit of a it's tricky very, question. <laughs> it's a very, I mean, the looping songs, there's like looping has its limitations, but then that also gives it this wonderful like the looping songs, they're very much songs that you wouldn't want to play with a band because they wouldn't work like that. They work in a kind of droning continuous way which is really nice for those songs um 
and because they were written on loop stations they're not i would never i would never play them with a band and but then i do love you know when i go to the studio and i have and we and we like recorded the last album dan wild the producer knows stacks of great musicians and he was just calling people up every other day and and I, and, I, and I can remember sitting there thinking, oh, you know, I'd love like one day if I was ever lucky enough to kind of um, get bowling along, I'd love to have a, like a, a three piece or a four piece group and go out and do it. I don't know, to be honest with you, that would be a really, I think that would be an impossible. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know how to answer. Sorry. Yes, I think you did a, a sort of swan, song swap thing with 20 other singer-songwriters a while ago. Yeah. So basically you went in a lottery and you ended up with one another's songs mm -hmm. you had to do something with. How did that work out? It sounded like a fun idea. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it, it was, it was really good fun. Um, I, I got a song <laughs> by a band called um, Beard of Destiny. They had a song called Ten Pence Man, which is about a homeless guy. Um, and you were allowed to kind of, it had to be a cover, but you're allowed to do whatever you want. So I kind of took their song and uh, turned it into like a story song told from the homeless man's perspective. And it was, yeah, I mean, it, was, it, was, it was kind of stressful. I don't think I thought about how difficult it would be because I knew, I didn't think we were going to have to like play them to one another live uh, and, and kind of chat. And I thought, oh God, if I make it, if I do a really terrible job of it and they're sat there like, hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. It's going to be really awkward, but they were, but they were really, yeah, they were really um, sort of receptive, and you know, like they really liked it. And a girl, and a girl did one of mine. She did Bird of Paradise, and she kind of slowed it down into this big piano ballad, and it was amazing because I'd never. A bit, that's 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 a very popular song for me. Like that's one people really like to hear, and and the lyrics because I've had to play it so many times. The lyrics have kind of lost a lot of the emotional content for me. So when I heard someone else playing it for the first time it kind of took me right back to uh, you know what I was thinking when I wrote it and it was very um yeah it was a really it was a really interesting moment for me it kind of reminded me that you have to give songs a break so what what is Bird of Paradise about oh I've been dating this girl and it all went down the toilet and um it's just about a lonely sort of singer songwriter um she, 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 was, she was a fabulously attractive woman and i had gotten kind of caught up in uh, that side of it a bit too much. And so, you know, you know, from a kid, I had a fascination with the birds of paradise in the Amazon Delta, I think it is. And then was really fascinated by the people who would bother to go there and try and photograph them and spend months in the jungle, kind of um, trying to capture pictures of those, of those most kind of, you know, rarest and exotic of birds. So, and, and that's what it, that's what the situation felt like. The relationship felt like I was kind of a sort of, sort of sad lonely photographer waiting for something very beautiful to happen um yeah and it's just kind of like trying to you, you know trying to ca trying to sort of capture that idea i seem to recall in there that you say about the bird of paradise flying through your window or into the window uh, through yeah into is a very different song yeah, <laughs> <a bum>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it brings it close to you <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah it's just about um you know, I, I guess it's just about a lonely person who's kind of stuck at home. Um, I'm a bit of a, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not, an, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an agoraphobic, but I do spend a lot of my time at home, and I, I do try and um, get out a bit more. But I quite like sort of being at home, and uh, it was just about that, just you know, you know, you know, sort of making a comment about how something kind of fanciful and, and otherworldly could fly into your life and kind of inspire you to get off your ass and do something. So it was, yeah. Flying through my window, pretty bird Sing your morning song, what's the word? Stay for the afternoon Heaven knows I'm needing you Come inside, that'll be nice Bird of paradise Flying to my world, pretty bird Tell me of the things that you've seen and heard What's out there beyond my cage Tell me please before you fly away As 
Cause I know now that you won't come twice Bird of paradise I know now you won't be tamed I know now you'll never take my name This whole thing is such a shame But it's all my fault I've only got myself to blame To my life, pretty bird. Save me from myself, don't be deterred. Oh, I'm needing someone just like you to fly in here and help me through. So come on, let's roll the dice, bird of paradise. Flying through my window, pretty bird Sing your morning song, what's the word? Stay for the afternoon Heaven knows I'm needing you Come inside, that'll be nice Bird of paradise Come inside, that'll be nice Pretty bird of paradise Thank you.